was an actor and he appeared in Lucia Fulci's City of the Living Dead. He also appears in Lamberto Barber's Demons. And then he went on to make films such as The Set and Cemetery Man, which is also called Della Morte Della More. However, this was, I think, his opus because he really allows his aesthetic eye to flourish in a way that doesn't pay too much credence to plot, but it also doesn't pay too much credence to indeed the genres of Italian horror. So it's got gore, but it's not a particularly gory film. It's got a mystery, but it's not a particularly giallo mystery. And it also has that thumping, pounding soundtrack, but again, it's somehow transformed into a more esoteric version of traditional goblin soundtrack. The church also has one of my least favourite people in, it, in the world, uh, the hideous Aja Argento, and even at 14 she was absolutely annoying to the point of pathology. However, it does have some great actors in it, and it has Giovanni Lombardo Radice, who is a fabulous and wonderful masochistic whipping boy of Italian horror that you will also know from City of the Living Dead, from Cannibal Ferox, Cannibal Apocalypse, and many others. And it has a very young, very beautiful Thomas Arana, and the film, therefore, has a lot of different connections to Italian horror gentrification. It is produced by Dario Gento, and for those of us who are film geeks and we like our little details, there's plenty of that to keep us amused. There are also some incredibly interesting architectural features, and the architecture of evil in this film is mirrored in the characters. The secret of the film is about finding the secret of the architect who created the building. So the most important character in this film is the building itself, which is why it's called the church. The building is the mystery, the building is the puzzle, but the building is also what constitutes the characters rather than the characters occupying the building. The mystery is a geomantic mystery. It is about the architecture of good and evil, and yet it's not oppositional. It is collapsed together. So we have a prelude where we learn about the Knights Templars, those great figures of all evil that happened in the Middle Ages. If we ever want to blame anything, we blame the Knights Templar, as the Tombs of the Blind Dead series did so well. And then we have this church that was built as a kind of apologetic, gate of hell over marking. And so the mystery of the film is all about twofold things. What happened and how do we get out? Because this church is the gate of hell and it is a mono-directional or mono-portal as they call it, gate. And so there are two options that the characters in this film have. They can either seek to escape, which involves an incredibly bibliophilic narrative of a kind of detective work that has to happen through going to secret manuscripts and deciphering secret codes, which is a very sexy kind of detective work, if you ask me. Or they undergo the metamorphosis that is demonic possession. However, it's a much more sophisticated version of demonic possession than we see in Lamberto Barber's Demons, even though that's a brilliant film. Because each demonic possession has a, an aesthetic referent to some kind of iconography dating from the medieval era right up to modern times. So Thomas Arana creates this beautiful demonic Satan, fallen angel, leathery winged sex beast, I guess for want of a better word. Um, and he looks magnificent and he then transforms into the goat of Mendes in a sort of Baphomet character. And interestingly enough, and if this doesn't tantalise you, nothing will, the scene where the becoming goat demonic fallen angel has sex with the very willing and quite enjoying sacrificial non-virgin virgin during the Sabbath is actually a really tender and quite erotic moment. I've seen a lot, perhaps too many, Goats having sex with women in films in terms of that satanic binary. And they're not always very sexy. This is really sexy.